What's up guys, it's Raider Laker 402 coming at you with another video and this video is going to be about the Lakers season so far and the Ray John Rondo versus Chris Paul fight. First thing we got to talk about of course is that fight. That was crazy. But I have to give, I mean, I have to give Ray John Rondo credit. You don't just let somebody stick your damn finger in your face and mush it and you know you don't let nobody do that shit to you because i know if somebody did that to me i'd be we'd still be scrapping i don't know i don't give a shit who it is so i decided rondo but i did see at first i was like chris paul's lying about the the spit i didn't see nobody spit on him rondo didn't spit on him and, and then i seen one video where i actually seen spit coming out of rondo's mouth and you could see chris paul going like Going like they're looking at him like what the hell? So I could, yeah. If somebody spits on you, you yeah, you, you're doing it. No, it. Doesn't matter what, how nice of a guy you are, you guys are gonna sc start scrapping. But as far as like what Rondo said afterwards, because he came out today about it, saying, "You really think I, if I spit on him or if I intentionally spit on him, I would have been like looking away, not ready for him to retaliate towards me." You know, because normally you spit on somebody, they're gonna, they're gonna throw, a, they're gonna throw a punch. It's guaranteed. So Rondo was saying, you think if I really spit on him, I'm not gonna be prepared for, because he's gonna hit me, because he was just looking away, like nonchalantly, just looking away. So I, that does kind of make sense. If he really intended to spit on him, I guarantee Rondo wouldn't have been looking like that. He would have been looking right at him, like I know you're gonna throw, you're gonna throw at me, but we're gonna get it on right now. So I, I kind of, it makes sense what Rondo was saying, but on the video you could you could, you could see Rondo going like this, and spit flying out of his mouth like, you, you, you spit on him, dude. But he said that he had the, what was Rondo saying? He had the um, mouthpiece in his mouth, and he was like, I don't know what he was doing, and then it just came out of his mouth like he wasn't intending to intending to spit intentionally on him I don't know I mean but Rondo does make a point like if you spit on somebody you know they're gonna swing on you so you're gonna be you're gonna be prepared for it but he was looking away so it wasn't like he was surprised when Chris Paul kind of well as what they were saying mushed him in his face and then Rondo got him with that left hook dude Bow! I mean that was the first time in a while you've seen an NBA fight where dudes connected but I see Chris Paul hit him with a, with a not bad shot too. But what Brandon Ingram, he did over exaggerate out of this whole thing. I mean, I do get it though. James Harden does that's some bullshit. What James Harden and Chris Paul gets away with? Harden looks like he fucking travels on every freaking play, and then Brandon Ingram was like, "Screw this shit. I don't give a shit if he's a superstar. Get the hell out of my way." Because you could tell, when that happened, right, you watch the replay. When after Harden bumped him, you know, thought he had the and one, and he was looking at the refs like, and one, and one. Watch when he was doing that. He crossed right in front of Brandon Ingram, like, and one, and one, right in front of Ingram. And Ingram was like, man, get the fuck away from me. Like, you could tell he was just irritated. Like, I don't know if, if Harden did that on purpose. Like, I'm going to walk in front of him and do this. Or he was just looking for the referee, just saying, is that an and one? I need an and one. But it pissed off Brandon Ingram. And you could tell shit was building because of how they're getting the calls and the Lakers are not getting, like Luke Walton was saying after the game, 74 points in the paint. Well, I don't know if it was that game or if it was, oh, it was a San Antonio Spurs game that the 74 points in the paint. But in essence, you know what I'm saying is the Lakers been getting a shit ton of points in the paint, and they're not getting the calls. I think in that game, the Rockets game, they shot like 38 free throws compared to the Lakers 26. I believe. I think I believe that's what it was. It might have been this fucking Spurs game. I don't even remember. But <laughs> all I know is that the the Lakers ain't getting the calls. It might have been the Spurs game. Yep. Because Luke Walton was talking about that. But anyways, like Luke, Wal um, Luke Walton's right. He has a case. 
I mean, we got the most, we're the aggressors and we're not getting the calls. Just because we got Josh Hart and the young guys are not giving them the calls. That's some total bullshit, man. We should be shooting way more free throws than what we're getting. But like in that Spurs game, I have to admit, if LeBron makes those two free throws, game over. We win the game. There ain't no discussions about us getting fouled and we should have been at the free throw line more. We would have won that game. Or if LeBron would have made that last second shot, it wouldn't have mattered. But he missed, so now we got to emphasize we're not getting going to the free throw line enough. We're getting fouled too more, and we're not getting the calls, which is probably true. But a win would have taken all that away, and we would have forgot about it. Now we lost. We're like, all right, make the damn calls. We're not getting the calls. You know, we have to find something because we don't want to blame ourselves. You know, we don't want the Lakers don't want to blame themselves. So they're like, we got to find something, which is legitimately they're right. But like I said, a win would have, if they would have won, they wouldn't have been talking about that. I guarantee it. But they lost, so I mean, zero and three. But one thing I do like is that they're they're freaking been playing good every, in all three games. They've been close games, winnable games. So it's not like we're getting blown out. I mean, we're right there, right there to win. And Josh, man, Josh Hart. Wow, that guy's been balling out. Summer League has continued to the freaking uh, regular season. Another player that's surprising me that's been doing really good, and I think deserves more minutes. I know he's got foul trouble the last game, but JaVale McGee. I didn't think he was going to help us out this much. I, mean, I knew he was going to help us out because he's he's big, tall, he's athletic, He could you know he's a good shot blocker, but I didn't think he was going to be this much of an impact on us, but yeah, I mean, I, I have my DraftKings lineup. That dude tears it up. Cheap, and he gives me a lot of points. But anyways, not talking about that, but even in, in, in real life, not just DraftKings, but in real life, he, he's pretty good. I mean, he's a lot better than I thought he was. So, that helps a lot. Um, With the suspensions of Chris Paul, to the Rockets, I know that hurts them, but they got talent. I think I think Eric Gordon's gonna be starting for them at point guard in this spot. But as far as us, the Lakers, you know, now that we don't got uh, Rajon Rondo and Brandon Ingram, that gives more time for Kyle Kuzma. And look at Kuzma, thirty-seven points. I mean, that dude. When I don't, I don't know if we're gonna get rid of a guy or not. But it seems like when Ingram's out now, that he's getting more time. He's balling out more. I'm not saying that Ingram is the reason why he's not, but I guess when another guy goes out and you get more playing time, it's more opportunity for you. And that's all you need in this, in this league or NFL or NBA. You just need the opportunity. And once you get it, look at Kuzma balled out. Lonzo Ball played pretty good. He's been hitting his freaking threes. If he plays like this consistently, I, I'm, we're in good shape. Because everybody kept wondering about his shot. You know, oh, he's, he's not that good of a three-point shooter. He was at UCLA. And I know that the uh, UC, uh, college three-point line is, I think, three feet shorter. But you're not going to go from being a pretty good three-point shooter to being shit in the NBA. It's just confidence. And I, that's all I knew about him was his confidence. Once I knew he, he, he could shoot the ball, it's just a matter of him knowing that he could shoot rather I don't know if it's all in his head, but he can shoot. I mean, he's proving he can shoot threes. But if he can keep this up and do this consistently, I don't think he's going to get traded. I think we'll get them keeping him. But our team looks pretty solid. One guy that I know the rest of my Laker peeps know this, or hopefully they know this. I hate when they keep saying we don't have shooters. All I have to say is Svi Mikhailu. That dude can shoot. I put him against Clay Thompson any day with a three-point contest. I bet you anything he could hang with Clay Thompson. I don't know about Steph Curry, but Clay Thompson, he can hang with them. Svi can shoot. Watch his tape at freaking at Kansas. That dude can shoot. All they gotta do is give him opportunity. Give him the opportunity to play. And I know last game he did, but I think he missed like two shots, but 
I mean, realistically, he's a great, he's a good three, not just good, he's a great three-point shooter. He just got to have the opportunity. To, once, if he gets that, that's all he needs. Just give him more playing time. And I like that Williams guy, that center. Wow, he's, I didn't get to see the last game because I came home and it was like ending of the fourth quarter of that Spurs game. And I actually missed it because I have a stream smart box and damn thing wouldn't load for me because I don't have the NBA TV channel. And I tried to get my stream smart box working, but it took me forever. By the time I got it working, the damn game was already over. But anyways, yeah, I saw highlights of that Williams guy and he did pretty good in overtime. So, but as the Lakers, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the, with the way they've been playing. Defensively, not so much, but offensively, a lot better than I thought. But, I mean, what is it, what's the case of you scoring 110 when you're giving up 115? I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose, right? You got to play some freaking defense sometime, but I, but I love JaVale McGee. Oh man, I, I love me some JaVale McGee right now. Him and kind of Rondo, I miss him right now. I know he's on, he's going to miss at least, what, three more games, I believe? He had a, oh no, he's, he's three games total. He just missed one, so he's got two more. Brandon Ingram has four games, but he has three more games. Shit, kind of sucks, but gives more guys playing time like Svi Mikhailu. I just want him to shine. I really want him to shine so they can give him more playing time. I hate when they keep saying, Lakers don't have no shooters. Yeah, we do. Svi Mikhailu can shoot. Just got to give him the damn ball. Once they give him the ball and he starts raining threes, people's going to wake up and know this dude can shoot. That's why it just pisses me off when they say that we don't have any shooters. But as far as pace-wise, the Lakers got really great fast pace. And I knew LeBron could do it. It's just a matter of, is he going to do this all season? At this fast pace all season long? I think he's in condition enough to do it because it doesn't look like he slowed down a bit. He could hang. It's just, do you really want to wear him out? Like, towards the later, you know, later half of the season when you're trying to make a playoff push? I don't know. I know the young guys can hang. Ball, Ingram, Kuzma. You know, all them guys can hang doing it, but JaVale McGee, that guy, I keep talking about him, but damn, man, he's he's really impressed me. I like the way he's been playing. Him and, uh, you know who needs to step up? KCP. He hasn't been playing that good at all. I mean, we given him, I think, we didn't we sign him for like $11 million? God, we should be starting Josh Hart. Josh Hart's been playing better than him. KCP's been playing fucking like garbage lately. And I know he's better than that because last year you've seen him have a lot of good games. And he's actually a 3 and D guy. But he hasn't been doing anything lately, so I just hope he can get his shit together. I like Lonzo Ball. I think he's been playing good. Rondo's been playing good up, up until that damn fight. Um, JaVale McGee's been playing good. I'm trying to think of who else. Brandon Ingram's been all right. Kuzma's been pretty good, especially this last game. Kuzma just tore it up last game. LeBron's been LeBron, but LeBron has to, he has to be more aggressive. And I like the fact that he, if it wasn't for him, they, the game wouldn't have even gone in overtime. So I can't really say, well, nobody could blame LeBron. Hey, if it wasn't for LeBron... Well, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have gotten overtime. That deep three that he had to tie it, that was that was fucking clutch. But in the overtime, that last second shot that I seen, he should have took it to the hole. I didn't like that shot attempt that he took. He It seems like he's scared to shoot free throws, which we all saw he missed that too, which would have sealed the game. We would have won had he made those two, two free throws. I know there's a lot of Kobe fans out there. Fuck, I'm a big Kobe fan. I love I love Kobe. Damn, I miss that guy. But and I'm pretty sure he would have made those two free throws. But 
you know, you can't really compare Kobe to LeBron. I mean, I, I love me some Kobe. Not just the Lakers. I love Kobe. But, and I miss him. But he ain't here no more, so we have to we have to cheer for LeBron. So hopefully the Lakers can get their shit together, start gelling. I think as a, as the season goes on, they'll get more comfortable playing with each other, and they'll end up winning more games. Yeah, they're zero and three right now, but they could easily be three and zero. It was three close games. I'm not worried about them right now. I still say they win at least forty five, in between forty five and fifty games. But it, it, it all depends on how long it takes for them to start gelling. You know, start getting their rhythm. Once they get that get that going, they'll they'll be fine. So but hey, I think they played today. I don't know who they play, but I know they played tonight. Because right now it's still it's early Monday morning or Wednesday morning. I think I'm pretty sure they played tonight, but I just don't know who. I don't know if it's against I don't even want to guess. I forgot who they play tonight, but anyways, let's see if they can get their first win tonight. Hopefully they do. And I think after that, they'll get confidence, start getting their shit together, start getting some victories rolling. All right, Laker fans, see you at this next video. I don't know when I'm going to make another video, but it might be a couple games from now, two, three games from now. I'm not going to do a video with every Laker game, but... Maybe every two, three games or so. See how the Lakers are doing. See if they're making any moves. And I don't know if they're going to do any trades or not. But you get what I'm saying. Maybe every two or three games. See how they're doing. I might make a video. But catch you guys on the flip side. Hope you guys all having a great, great morning, night, whatever you guys. I'm going to bed after this. So my voice is groggly. I think I'm catching a cold. But all right. You guys have a good night, morning. Bye.